Oh, and I just found out yesterday, as me and my Wells Fargo dudes family were having our deep discussions, that Ethan um, just converted to Islam. And it's the same day that I happened to get baptized. That Sunday, that April 10, that Sora's birthday. And we thought that was awesome. Everyone's where they're supposed to be. Because clearly there's a bond that we have as everyone goes their separate directions. And actually, there's stuff that I know in Islam that there's at least one quote that I know from Islam that is beautiful. And there's also stuff that's difficult. But um, as someone who's been reading the Bible their whole life, something being difficult doesn't matter. <laughs> the Bible, the Old Testament, it's difficult. It's very difficult. So there's no such thing as well. It's kind of difficult. I mean, it is, but as if that's something that. Um, detracts from it if you know if we can be okay with the bible um that has its truth but is difficult as well um but i did see something in my in the time period where i started reading like some it's a while it was some time ago. yeah actually it was years ago because i was aware of this verse um, of a, of a certain verse back in like 2013 or something. So it was right. Cause spring, spring, 2013. Yeah. So it's, it's been a, it's been some years since I ran into it, but, um, cause I got a Quran when I went to North Hennepin community college. And which is where I transferred from to MSUM. But there is a day where some um, some people from Islam like were having a meeting. And then like if you went to that meeting, they gave you a free Quran. And I still have it. And I let um, Cameron at Wells Fargo borrow it at one point. And she looked into it a little bit because she was interested. Um, but I got it back at some point. Um, but I ran into a verse there that was beautiful. That was like a very understanding verse. It was like, it doesn't matter if you're Jewish or Christian. All that matters is that you belong to God. Yeah, at some point in the in the Quran, it says the Christians are of a confusion. Maybe around that same verse, maybe in one of the preceding or following verses. Um, and if you look at history, the Christians are of a confusion, are in a confusion. But the path that has led me to Jesus is a beautiful and a true one. So we'll see what becomes of it. We'll see what truth. It, we'll see. We'll see. Wherever I go to, it's like meant to be like it's real because this isn't just like, for example, even the baptism that I had, like. If not for all the like real life things that are happening, like with Friday with the Little Mermaid and the and the love of the father situation, Saturday the thing watching that episode of Naruto, that power that love of a father situation, Sunday at night all of a sudden realizing that like wait a minute tomorrow's April is that looking it up online it is indeed Sora's birthday that I'm getting baptized on and Kingdom Hearts is a big thing between like 
between me and God, which may not make sense, but it has become that from 12th grade onwards, maybe even before then, but especially because of certain things with 12th grade. Like, it's all about... It's all about the specific, like the connect, just like any relationship. Like I don't know. That's why there's big things that God can do that are like universal. That if you tell someone, it's like, oh man, your daughter just got keyword of this when you prayed. Oh wow, that's amazing. Everybody can get that. But there's certain things that are going to mean something to you specifically. That are in that are specific to you and God's relationship, and those should almost be more beautiful because it's something between the two of you. It's God understanding you. It's God loving you. I wonder if God can meet Viktor Frankl's definition of love that I talked about in, I think, I think the video in this series that was called Family and Growth. I think. But anyway. Yeah. I have a new friend in Jesus. But I have to learn more about this new friend that I have. But if not for all this special stuff that was, that happened leading up to the baptism, the baptism itself, even though it was a ritual with like a bunch of people, everyone was supportive. Like one of my brothers asked me like, do you feel different after that? And like, I remember what my initial response is, but like the baptism itself did not feel like special per se necessarily. It's everything that God was doing surrounding it. The whole Peter Pan thing, the whole thing just preceding when I would come to this baptism, the things that happened every, like the Friday, the Saturday, like, like I've said. Even to realize that I think at some point, I think I've said this, but at some point, there may have been a time that I wanted to have a baptism. I'm like, I'm, I'm pretty sure and I had forgotten about that. I think that was like years ago during a certain season where God seemed like really present and like, I think I wanted to get baptized. I don't, I feel like this is around like the fall of 2012, spring of 2013. Like maybe like, and it's, it's hard cause you can't remember for sure, but I feel, but yeah. And like, I had forgotten. But when I remember that, like I felt calmer about I'm about to get baptized. I don't know if they're going to have me say something that I, will I be able to believe what I'm saying? I just placed myself there because my mom had said that everyone was getting baptized. And at this point in my life, I'm realizing that I don't always want to do the lone wolf thing. Like I'll, I'll be a lone wolf. Like I'll do my thing. But like there's some times where you have to be a family. And if everyone else was doing it, I was going to do it though. Lo and behold, I would come to find out that my mom wasn't doing it. My dad wasn't doing it. And when I came home initially, my brothers didn't even know they were doing it. So, but again, 
happy accidents, things happen for a reason, whatever. Like if she, if I had known that, that it was just the brothers, I may still have gone because then it's like, oh, all the brothers are, so I should, you know, who knows? But yeah, maybe I actually still would have gone because there's, there's the bond of brothers and that's something that's powerful. That's sometimes even more powerful. So, and I don't, it's not like she like lied on purpose. It's not like she lied on purpose or something. I mean, well, maybe she did, but she had good intentions. And like, I'm, if it got me there, I'm glad that I got, you know, I'm glad that I got there. It's all part of the plan. So, yeah. It's beautiful, isn't it? So many things are happening lately and so many things are making sense. There's someone I know named Mercedes Forslund, who I went to community college with at North Hennepin Community College. And we didn't like connect so much when we were there together, but she was in this history class with me and then someone else that had, and then this other person who had gone to Osseo Senior High with me. Um, and then this other woman too, or this other girl. Um, but me and Mercedes didn't connect, didn't like, I mean, We didn't necessarily connect like strongly. Like I thought she was, I thought she was really beautiful and like, and she was smart. And like, so I was trying to like get to know her more, but like, or to be friendly with her, but like, we didn't really connect much. But then somehow, like years later, I don't know what, like on Facebook, we just started like connecting. I don't, I don't, I think. It was, we kind of had like, we had, um, there are these quizzes that you, you know, those quizzes they always have you take on Facebook and like, it like tells what your personality is or like what country you match or what animal you match. And like, we kept matching things for a while. Like it was, I don't know if it was like what country you would be happiest in or like what country you should go to or what country your personality matches but our both our countries were india and like i think our animals i think they're both um oh and jo and jocelyn at wells fargo actually told me yesterday when we were having all our deep discussion she told me that her spirit animal was a flamingo if i had a spirit animal i think it'd be i feel like it'd be a i want it to be a i well, what would, I feel like it might be a ladybug. I saw I, the, yeah, I feel like it'd be a ladybug. Um,
there's a time roughly around fall 2012 where I came home one day and I was wearing a red shirt, a red, a red long sleeve shirt that I feel like I should still have, but I don't know where it, where it is. And I think it was the red shirt, but there was a ladybug just like straight up attached to my shirt. And what I, what I learned growing up that they told me when I was a kid was that for however many spots there are in a ladybug is how many wishes you can make. So I remember I counted its spots, took a sheet of paper and wrote down that many wishes. I would assume that's what I did. I remember, I remember thinking of wishes and that like had to have been what I did because that was the belief. Cause you see, people are predictable. Like even if I can't remember the exact memory by knowing what I believe and my thoughts or whatever, I can know what I would have done. People are predictable. And one, one morning during one of these visits home, the, actually the one where my mom was in the hospital and after the whole thing with Kaede and his girlfriend happened where I was realizing that I didn't, that I felt like I didn't like her and I understood where my parents were coming from with their, with their at least past position on like their whole relationship and stuff and all that. And like, I was finally getting where they were coming from and like feeling like that. But then she actually started like addressing me a little bit because she was actually there at the hospital with us as well. Um, that weekend. And, and she was also at the baptism that we all went to. And she was also there when my mother graduated, um, like last year or however ago from her, from the degree she was going for. Um, yeah. And Shelby's mom, Amy, is going to graduate on May 14th too, which I intend on going to, which I'm going to go to, and I'm going to buy her Red Lobster. But, um, because that family is special to me. Um... They're all special to me. But... Yeah, so... I mean, that weekend that... That stuff was... That I was having these realizations about his girlfriend and, like, just how I felt and stuff and being like, oh, I actually see where they're going. Because all prior to this moment, I had always been, like, supportive, like... Whenever my parents would talk about like, oh, you're doing this, you're too young, blah, 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 I'd always be like, well, this, 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 anything. I would always be like, just, you know, positive, which you never know who's supporting you behind the scenes. Like, just like I supported Kaede all, like, all this time, like, because he's my brother and like, you know, same thing like Taryn could have been doing for me with and Furco. like people could have been saying, and I don't know. I only know what I'm aware of. Also, you don't know what God is doing for you behind the scenes. You never know who's doing what for you behind the scenes. There are people that could be praying for you behind the scenes. You never know who's doing what for you or who's or who's hurting you. But you never know who's doing something for you. You never know who will do something for you, who did do something for you. If Jesus died on the cross, do we know what he did for us? If he didn't, then he didn't. But if he did,
do we know what he did for us? At some point, I'm going to have to learn about this, this new friend. Though I was Christian before, but this time, well, I mean, I don't know. I was Christian before. We'll see if I find myself in an old place or in a new place. Um, I don't even know what I am now. Like there's beautiful things in the Quran, there's religions. I just know by what has happened, what God, what God has led me to in this past weekend and everything. Jesus. I don't know the specificities about Jesus. There are different opinions out there. But Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. It doesn't matter if you're Jewish or Christian or and now now I'm going past the Quran, but because I only remember I think I only remember the Quran mentioning Judaism and Christianity or something like that, but inspired off of that, it doesn't matter if you're this is what I'm saying, it doesn't matter if you're Jewish or Mormon or Christian or Muslim or Buddhist. One of the people at Wells Fargo is Buddhist. And meditation, like, universally that's good for you. Um, though that's just one aspect of it. What matters is who you are and who you belong to. What matters is that you belong to God. So who are you? And do you really think that if you have a relationship with God, that God doesn't see you struggling? So have faith. Like I did, <laughs> except I didn't know what would happen. I didn't, I just thought, I just decided to have faith. Like I didn't, but I 
and to be a good person. Mercedes had this thing when, because at some point we must have started messaging each other or something, and like, because there there's this weird, when that start, kept happening with like the quizzes where we'd have like the same thing, that just in, that intrigued me, and I don't know if I I don't somehow we ended up talking to each other and like we started like calling each other and talking to each other, and and she has a boyfriend, but. She's become, she's, she's, she's an interesting figure in my, like, she's very, like, 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 someone who believes in, like, like, um, not spirituality, I don't know what the word is, like, but she believes in things that are, like, outside of my realm of, like, like, comfortability, even. But, like, because she's developed in her own way out over these years. But one thing that I thought was really cool, or that, or one thing that impressed me was that, like, one time when we were talking, she was talking about, like, what led to her meeting her boyfriend and how she could see, like, how she appreciated and knew what happened that led her to that you know like it's like when you look back and you're like oh this like if this wouldn't have happened this wouldn't have happened if that wouldn't have happened but then because that that kind of thing and I really appreciate like I was really impressed by that I was like wow and I wanted to I might I wanted to like call her Hawkeye and I started calling her Hawkeye actually or Hawk or something like that as a nickname because of how she could like see but I now have the same like I didn't have that then but I just really appreciate it. I was like, wow, I want to, like, see that. I didn't then. Now. Now I do. And it's beautiful. What matters is who you are. And who you belong to. What matters is who you are. And that you belong to God. What matters is who God is. And who we are under him. What matters is who we are. even as difficulties in the world would push us to be otherwise. But we stay strong regardless. Like Taryn. But I think she had her moment of, or time, maybe even time period amidst all the stuff that's happened with her. I think she she's had her own struggles this last year as well.
we both had stuff beyond simply the Furco stuff. And I think she had her moment of of loss of faith or something. But she came back from that. At least last I heard. Stay strong, Taryn. And you stay strong as well. And I should stay strong as well. Life is about more than just money. It's about who you are and what you believe in. And in due season, you'll be reaping. For the things you believed in, when you felt like leaving, but you didn't give up. Just like in Kingdom Hearts, if you're playing as Sora and you got Goofy on your squad, sometimes he'll be like, don't give up. Don't give up. There are things that you give up on in life because it's not meant to be and you're trying to hold on. And there are things you... And there are things you don't give up on. Whereas the former, you have, like, have to, like, it's not meant to be, but you're trying to hold on. But there are things you don't give up on. Because that's who you are, or that's what you believe in. That's who you are. That's what you believe in. I'm not about to start singing Journey, which I think is the artist that has a song about Don't Stop Believing or whatever, but you can go look it up if you want. Even if he doesn't answer right away, even if things are bad, it doesn't mean that they'll always be bad. Sometimes the path to be, to get to where you want to be or where you'd love to be and didn't even think of, you have to go, th you're getting there, but just by a path that you can't yet understand until you get to that point where you look back and you're like, wow. That's beautiful. Taryn would say glorious. I say beautiful. Although part of the definition of glorious includes beautiful, so I fail. But that's none of my business. Um, yeah. 
have faith. That reminds me of a Lion King 2 song. It's either Lion King or Lion King 2. It's maybe not the entirety of the song, but there's a part that says Have Faith. I think it's the Lion King 2. Okay. I should get ready to go so, or no, shadow another school counselor at, I believe, Ellen Hopkins. And I have a rap about world peace this time because this school counselor has a joking reputation among his colleague school counselors from different schools of wanting world peace or at least of dreaming big. And I don't think he meant for me to take him seriously, but I have a rap about world peace. I should actually practice it right now. Why not? He's more interested in the calm me down rap and the friendship rap. And right now I'm more interested in knowing where the heck I'm going because in about an hour and, tw and 16 minutes, I need to be in Ellen Hopkins and I haven't showered or anything. But, um, I don't even know like where it is. The bus can get you like anywhere, but yeah, I mean, um, check it. Okay. If you want to see world peace, then you have to be a piece of world peace. Will it be easy? Oh no, hardly. It'll be hard. So let's get started, please. You can do anything you put your mind to. Sometimes in life, you'll also find too that the vision and the mission you had once upon a time changes with the, se with the season and forms a new rhyme because you learned or you got stronger, you have a new dream, and you know it belongs here. Probably even better than the old one. Believe you can, and then you go and get the job done. If you want to see world peace, then you have to be a piece of world peace. I need to be, bring my drumsticks. Will it be easy? Oh, no, hardly. It won't be a... Will it be easy? Oh, no, hardly. It won't be a piece of cake. We'll have to make some powerful choices. Use our voices. Make some noises. Dance break now. Because we'll show them how we break the boundaries of 196 countries and 6,500 languages. Which one's the most popular? Mandarin. Chinese. Be a piece of world peace. Be as powerful as you want to be. Maybe the world will see. But does the world have eyes? Actually, many. Two of which are yours. So how you see the world can be a piece of world peace. So be a piece of world peace. With these two pupils, be a good pupil. Get it, because they're students. Have some good principles that impress your principal. Might not be simple. Might be impossible, but we won't know until we try. Is that logical? Is it probable that you never know who's watching you? So who will you be? You don't have to speak Mandarin Chinese, because they can see. If you're in their field, field of vision, you can accomplish your mission. Since you never know who's watching, better watch how you're acting. Make some powerful choices that are really impacting. You might have a knack in it. Even if you don't finish, you'll end up somewhere beautiful. Don't let your heart be diminished. Let it stay full. With a new season may come a new reason. Where one dream dies, another comes alive. Ooh, it'll, it's all about who you are really, and you'll learn from life, ideally, and life will learn from you if you give it reason to. You are a piece of world peace. Yo, if you thought that was dope, listen to Ethan's rap. You think that was good? Listen to him and his written raps. And listen to whatever day of freestyling and the 100 days of freestyling where I recorded him in the rap battle and just the swag he had on stage. Between swag <laughs> and his written, like, depth... I mean, that wasn't a freestyle. That was, I mean, that was good. That was good, right? That was, I thought it was, I mean, I thought it was, yeah, you know? But this dude, 
It's like he has a hidden reservoir of talent. And I got that phrase from uh, from a from a play from Theater B. I don't know which one, but they said all of a sudden one of the characters was like, "It's like you you have a hidden reservoir of talent or something." I feel like that, yo. Like if Ethan tries to freestyle, he'll always have this like mental block. Just like just like Jocelyn has a block with comedy. But she's funny. But she has her moments. We're all going to be something special, aren't we? If we unlock our potential. The Buddhist, the Christian, and the Muslim. And Steve. And, Cam I don't, and Cameron and Haley that used to work. I don't know. I don't know how who all is going to become what. I just know that Wells Fargo in Hornbachers in Moorhead always has people that I connect with, even as people go in and come out. A high majority are people that I connect with. It's just a small little part of Hornbachers. And look at all this power that's happening. I'm so blessed to know them, to have them. <laughs> Cameron used to give me rides to go to BioLife before <laughs> I got, um, I almost wanted to say banned from BioLife, but no, I just, because both, they need both your arms to be able to give blood and only, or give plasma and only one of mine could. So, and then that, w that was actually fine at first, I guess. I don't know if both my arms were fine when they originally checked. Or if only one of them was when they originally checked. But I was able to get in initially. But then I kept trying to use my other arm that was that didn't work as well. And then it was one time too many and they were like, sorry, we gotta put you off for like six months. And then when I tried to come back... They needed both arms to work, and since only one of them does, I couldn't come back in. But <laughs> so I guess I'm. D does that? So am I banned from BioLife too? No, because I can still enter. They're not gonna be like, "Oh, we're escorting you out." <laughs> Anything else I want to talk about as I really shouldn't be here right now? Um, yeah, if you want to see world peace, then you have to be a piece of world peace. I wonder what we're all going to be, though. I don't, like, I don't, there's so many people that have come in and out of Wells Fargo that I've connected with. Haley. Haley Hemor, Mackenzie Breeden, both of them don't work there anymore. Haley moved to a different branch after graduating. Mackenzie, I don't know, she I think she goes to NDSU. I'm not sure, but um, she's she might not be banged till anymore. But Haley Hemor, Haley Hemor, Mackenzie Breeden, they're gone. Denver, oh my gosh, this dude was creative, like. He, he was just creative. Oh my gosh. Wow. He doesn't work there anymore though, but he he was cool. He was dope. Um man, he should like make TV help make TV shows TV shows or something or find his own little hustle. Um let's see. Oh, Justin Benson. He got another I think he got promoted and got went somewhere else. I still have his Pirates of the Caribbean movies. We really need to see that we've been, me, him, and Steve, the manager that we're supposed to all watch the Pirates of the Caribbean movies. I still have these. You know how long I've had these? Over there in a plastic bag. Although maybe they found, maybe the plastic bag has found where it's supposed to be. Um, it just needs to grow where it's planted. Or maybe I need to give them back. 
anyway, um, but yeah, he gave, he gave me all four Pirates of the Caribbean movies, and I've had them. I think Steve wants me to keep them so that it can ensure that, like, we actually all get together and watch the Pirates of the Caribbean movies. Um, but, so, Justin Benson, um, Haley Hemor, Mackenzie Breeden, Denver, Justin Benson, um, and then, obviously, Steve, um, Cameron, Jocelyn, Ethan, but now I'm, let me make sure I'm not repeating anybody. Haley Hemore, Mackenzie Breeden, Denver, Justin Benson, Steve, Cameron, Jocelyn, Ethan, Wait a minute, that's that's the same number of lottery tickets that I just bought yesterday for ten dollars. But um yeah, I think there there have been other Wells Fargo people, but those are the eights that I've connected with. It's the same number of lottery tickets that I just bought. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, it's nine twenty five. Put on my ugly jacket, sweatshirt. probably shower oh wait a minute though I should really like not shower maybe because I should maybe like catch this bus in like the next 10 minutes and I can't shower that quick or can I nah that shower is too cold which actually no that will make me shower faster but decisions decisions Anyway, um, love you, Wells Fargo family. I'm blessed to know you. You precious eight. Watch me, like, be forgetting someone, though. I better not be. How insulting would that be? It's like when I did the dragon football rap and I was trying to make a little line about every single person. And then I just had to do like this cover all for anyone that I might have missed, which is in the seventh video in the Dragon Football What's Your Story series. Um, I better not be missing anybody. How insulting would that? 